welcome to edgeofcode.com series of infinite roller tutorials. You can find written tutorials at edgeofcode.com if you prefer that. Um, so in the previous tutorial we made the camera follow the character as it rolled along and added in functionality to make the character jump pressing spacebar. Um, today we're going to add gaps, random gaps into the terrain and we'll make the character die when it falls through. We'll also stop the character's ability to jump an infinite number of times. I'll restrict it to maybe twice. So first open your infinite roller project and the scene and then open the trunk script. To add gaps we're going to deactivate certain blocks. Um, we'll add some randomness in so that it's not the same gap size each time. I will also add randomness to the position that the gap starts from. So first I'm going to create two private variables to um, for the minimum and maximum gap sizes. So they're going to be const variables and integers. And the first one I'll call min gap size. And I'll let it have a value of 5 to start with. And the other one will be max gap size. And I'll give that a value of 10. I just also add a comment, so this is the min and max size of the gaps in the terrain. Um, so we might want to change these values later, but this will do for now. Um, and we're going to pick a random number between these two values to be the number of ground pieces to deactivate. Okay, so next, create a new method called create gaps. Uh, it's public because we're going to want to access it from the terrain generator script. Um, inside this method, add a new integer variable called num grounds to deactivate. Um, so this is going to be the random value, so we're going to access Unity's random class and a method called range. Um, range takes a minimum and a maximum value and gives back an integer, a random integer between those two numbers. So min gap size and max gap size for us. Um, for integers, this range is exclusive of the upper limit, so num ground to deactivate will be either 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. Okay, so we also want to vary where the gap is, so I'm going to create two more consts, which will be similar to these, um, min gap position and max gap position. The min gap position means that we'll have at least five visible squares at the start before we deactivate any. The maximum gap position will be, well, I'll give it a value of chunk size minus mi sorry, max gap size. The reason for this will become clear in a moment, but the reason is so that all of the blocks we want to disable will be disabled. But yeah, we'll come to that more in a moment. So in create gaps, we actually want to create another integer variable called deactivate position. position. And this is going to be another random range um, between min gap position and max gap position. So in this case, it will give a value between 5 and chunk size minus gap size, which is 20. And it's exclusive of that, so it will actually be between 5 and 19. Okay, so as the ground pieces are children of the chunk game object that this chunk script is attached to, we're going to use a for loop and access each of them. So for... Um, an integer i starting at 0, going up to chunk size, 
and increasing i by one on each loop. I'm going to get the ith child using the transform of the game object that this chunk is attached to dot get child and I want the ith one so get child takes an index um, this gives us the transform of the child object so I'm gonna call this child And then I'm going to set the game object, sorry, set the child to be active. So because we're going to keep creating gaps as we go and we want to make sure that the initial point will be no gaps at all and then we'll create gaps. Otherwise it will have leftover gaps from last time and the time before and the time before. Um, and we don't want that. So we're going to set each child to be active. Uh, yeah, to remove any previous gaps. And to do that, to use child dot set active. Oh no, we don't. We do child dot game object dot set. So because child is the transform, we need to first access its game object before we can activate or deactivate it. And this takes a boolean, so we're setting it to be true. And then once we've done that, we want to create a gap if it should be a gap. Um, to do that, we're going to first check if it's a gap and I'm going to make a new method in a moment, but I'm just going to leave it empty like that for now. So is gap will check if this specific child game object should be a gap or not. And inside that, I'm going to deactivate the game object. So I've passed in false this time because we want it to not to be active. So now I'm going to create the isGap method. This one can be private because we're only going to call it from inside create gaps. And it's a bool object because we want it to return whether it is a gap or is not a gap. And passing false into this set active method disables all of the game object's components including its renderer which means it can't be seen anymore and its collider is also disabled so the character can pass through it okay so i'm going to need to pass some variables through so let's see what we're going to need so when is it a gap so it is a gap when the index of the child object which is i so i'm going to pass that through when the child index is more than or equal to the deactivate position variable so i'm going to need to pass that into So I'll just write that down. When child index is more than or equal to the activate position. Um, and also when, so and when the child index is less than deactivate position plus the number of ground pieces to deactivate. So I also want to pass this through. This is a bit bigger. Okay, um, so and ch 
card index is less than deactivate position plus num grounds deactivate. Um, so I'm not sure if that's clear or not why we're doing that. Uh, I'll just draw a quick image. Okay, so so to start with, we've got some blocks. We calculate a random position. Um, let's say in this instance it's two so the second child object will is where we want to start deactivating from so we want that one um, uh, we have also a random variable that signifies how many we want so let's say in this case it's three so that we want to get rid of three of those um, to check if it's a gap, we check the index of the child. So this is child zero, this is child one, child two, child three, child four, child five. So we go through, we get child zero to start with, we set it to be active, we check if it's a gap if it should be a gap. It should not be. So this should return false. Um, because deactivate position, I think I said two before, but that's actually one. Child index is zero. And it's less than deactivate position, which is one. So this initial bit is false. The and means that both of these things must be true for this to return true. Uh, for the second one, we've got the child object is one and the deactivate position is one, so they are equal. And we were looking for when it's more than or equal to. So this part returns true and we also want to check if child index is less than deactivate position which is one plus the number of pieces of grounds deactivate which is three and one is going to be less than four so this one's also true so is gap will return true and then for the next one we're going to have this is two, two in this case is more than one, so this returns true. And we've got two, which is less than four as well. So that one and that one will both be deactivated. And then number three <laughs> is also more than one, and number three is also less than four. And so that one will be activated. But number four, while this one is true, this one is not anymore because four is not less than four. So while this one will be true, this part will be false, which means that is gap is false as well. And hopefully that made it a bit clearer. So this code just needs to be called in an appropriate place now. So let's open terrain generator. I've got an error message there. Let's just check that first. Let's check I don't just need to save it because that's sometimes where errors come from. If I've saved it automatically before, no. See which line it's worried about. Ah, 
because I've retur- tried to return isgap with a capital letter. So it thinks I'm trying to return the method rather than the variable I've created with a lowercase i. So that's all that is. So if I save it and go back, it should go away. Excellent. And that um, warning is something we've talked about before and it's fine to ignore. Okay, so terrain generator. We're going to call it the end of the start method. So we want to create a gap in the current and the next chunks. And won't bother with the previous ones though because there's not much point. So let's see, create gaps in the current and next chunks. So this will just create the gaps in the initial pieces of ground. So remember we have three chunks, the previous current and next and this will create gaps in the initial current and next chunks before we start the game. So the current chunk dot create gaps and next chunk dot create gaps and save. Um, so next we're going to want to add the same thing, well, for next chunk in the update method. Um, it's going to be inside this if statement and after we've reassigned the chunks. So we want to create gaps in the next chunk. Remember create gap, first it activates all of the squares which means any previous gaps will be gotten rid of before we create a new one. Let's save that, make sure both scripts are saved and go and see if it works. Let's check for errors first. Nope, that's the one we can ignore. So if I press play now, we see we have a gap there and there. Um, the gaps to me look all a bit too similar maybe. Mm, yeah, so I'm going to change our variables here. So mm, I'm going to change it to between 3 and um, let's try 15. That might be too big to jump over the maximum one, but let's try it. Okay, so I needed to jump twice to jump over that one. Once to jump over that one. Ooh, twice. And this is a better variation, I think. That one was quite small. That one was quite big. <laughs> yeah, I think that would do. So you can change it to whatever you prefer and then um, go back and check that you're happy with it in Unity. Okay, so next we're going to add character death because at the moment if it falls through a gap it's just going to keep falling and falling and falling which isn't much of a game. Um, I'm going to add some stuff so that once it falls through a gap, once it reaches a certain height, um, it will pause the game and we'll need to restart it by pressing a key for now. So. We're going to first create a new script, so in the scripts folder, right click, create and C sharp script and let's call it game controller. Open it and let's delete the existing methods. So first add a new const variable for the height the character must fall below for the game to be over. So it's going to be private uh, const int and I'll call it game over height, game over height and I'm going to let it be minus five for now and um, let's add a comment above that as well. Um, so if the 
player falls below this height, the game is over. Um, we're also going to need a reference to the position of the character. Um, and as the position is part of the transform, we only want the transform component of the character. So we're going to drag this on in the inspector. So let's make it public. And uh, reference to character. Um, OK, save it and go back to Unity. Uh, create a new empty game object in the hierarchy. Call it game controller. And then drag the game controller script onto it. And then the character onto the slot. And save it. Okay, now we're going to add an update method. So in each frame, we need to check what whether the position of the character is below this or not. So um, if character.position.y is less than the game over height, then the game is over. And next tutorial, probably, we're going to add a menu system. So we're going to bring up the menu again when this happens. For now, though, we're for testing purposes to see if this works or not, we're going to add, we're just going to pause the game and be able to press R to restart it. So in the next tutorial, we'll add menu options, but for now, that's what we do. So inside this, we're going to pause it. To do this, we access Unity's time class and its static variable time scale. So as it says here, this is the scale at which the time is passing. Um, it's one for normal time and zero means that we're stopping time. So when we pause it, we want to stop time. So I'm going to set it to zero. Um, let's test this now, actually. So save it, go back to Unity, and press play. And hopefully, when it falls through a gap, it pauses. Excellent. OK, so now we're going to need to add some code so that we can actually restart the game when we press R. Uh, to do that, we're going to want to reposition the character. So I'm going to store a value for the player's original, or the character's original position. Position is a vector 3. And I'm going to find it in the awake method. And it's just character dot position. Um, next, we're going to create another new variable. Um, this one's going to be public as well because we want to assign it in the inspector. And it's going to we want a reference to the terrain generator. Oops. I'll call it terrain gen. Okay, so save the script and go back to Unity and drag the terrain gen game object onto it. 
und Sitz. Okay. And save it. So we're going to create another restart method inside the terrain generator script to restart the terrain itself. Okay, let's create a new method that we can call when we want to restart the game. I'm gonna add a comment above here. Uh, so restart the game. And this will be called when ooh, we restart. So at the moment it will be when we press R. So let's write that, when we press R. Um, and later on it will be when we press like a play button or something in the menu. For now, private method void called restart game. So we want to reposition the character. We do that by doing character dot position equals the character initial position. Um, we need to reset the terrain. Um, we haven't made this method yet, and we'll go and do it in a minute. So it'll be terrain gen restart, and then we want to unpause it. So we want to set the time dot time scale variable to be one, which makes it go back to a normal time. Okay, so in the update method, I'm going to create another if statement to check if we've pressed R. Um, so to do that, we use Unity's input class and access its static method get key down. So when we press a key um, and we want R, so that's key code dot R. When we press down on our get key down with our passed in will be true and we'll go into this if statement. So when we press R we want to call restart game. Okay, save that and then go to the terrain generator script and we're going to create a new method called restart. And it's public because we're calling it from the game controller. Okay, so in here, we're going to want to do some of the things we've actually already done. So I'm going to create a new method to do this. Okay, so this will be a private method. Repos. I'm just going to copy and paste this code there. And this is so that I don't have to write out that code again because um, it's going to be exactly the same thing that we want to do whether we've restarted the game or started it for the first time. We want to position each of the chunks at the beginning. Um, so I'm going to call reposition chunks here, as well as here. So make sure all the scripts are saved. Go back to Unity, and hopefully we'll be able to restart the game now. So it falls through the gap. If I now press R, it restarts the game. Yay. Note that it, at the moment it's just keeping the same gap as it did before. Um, if I go a bit further on so that we create different gaps, you'll be able to see that it's, it's just going to move these across. 
when I press R. It doesn't create new gaps because we don't need to, we haven't seen them yet. It doesn't matter that they're the same gaps that we created before. Okay. Um, so now we want to stop the character from jumping more than twice. So open the rolling character controller script and add a new variable for if the character is allowed to jump. So we've already got one that checks if we have jumped. I'm going to create one to um, see if it's allowed to. And we want can jump to be true because it should be allowed to jump to start with. Um, next we're going to add another one of Unity's own methods. Um, this one is on collision enter 2D and it has a collision variable passed in. Um, so this is called when a collision with the game object that this script at is attached to occurs. So inside we want to check if what this game object, so what the character has collided with is the ground. If it is the ground then we want to set can jump to be true because every time it hits the ground we then want it to be able to jump twice into the air. So let's check if collision, the variable that's been passed through here, if its game object has a tag of ground. And I don't think that I've actually given it a tag yet. So in a moment we'll go back and sort that out. And I'll explain what tags actually are. So in here we want to set can jump to be true. Um, we'll do some more of this in a minute, but let's go and sort out the tag. So go to your prefabs folder, ground, and then in the inspector at the top you can see that it says tag and it's untagged at the moment. Go to add tag, click on the plus to add a new one and call it ground. Now I'll go back to ground and assign it to be ground. So Unity uses this as another way to identify which game object we're talking about. So in this case we are looking for a game object with a tag of ground. So whenever it ta touches any of the pieces of ground this will be true. So yeah every time the character hits the ground, we'll go into this if statement and set can jump as true. So now we're going to add can jump to the if statement condition in fixed update. So we only want to jump if we've pressed jump um, and if we can jump. Um, inside here we're going to set can jump to be false. So to start with this should um, let us only be able to jump once. We'll add in something to let it jump twice in a moment. So save this, go back and press play and see if it works. So now I should only be able to, oh I've got this again. The message parameter has to be... Uh, okay. Okay, so I've typed in collision in here, but this should actually be collision 2D. Um, there's a three-dimensional version of this, which I think is like that, but because we're doing using a 2D game, both of these should be collision 2Ds. Let's see if that stops that happening again.
Okay. If I press jump, I can only jump once before I touch the ground again. Which makes me fall on the gap. Okay. Cool. Okay, so go back to the script and we're gonna make it jump twice before needing to land. So to do this, first add a new variable, uh, private const int called max jumps. Um, doing it like this will let us be able to just change this variable to vary the number of jumps in the future. So if we change our minds later and want to do three jumps instead of two, we just come here, change this, and that should hopefully be it. Um, okay, we're also gonna want to count how many times we've jumped. So. Private int called num jumps and initially that should be zero. Um, I might just add a comment to this as well. Okay, um, so now we're going to change some stuff in fixed update. We're not going to need this can jump boolean. So let's delete it, because we're going to do it in a slightly different way. So we want, if we've pressed jump and the number of times that we've jumped is less than the maximum number of jumps, then we can jump. So jump and num jumps less than max jumps. And we're going to count up num jumps. So num jumps plus plus is the same as writing num jumps equals num jumps plus one. So each time we jump, we're increasing it by one. And when we hit the ground, we want to set that to zero. So now the character should only jump if it's jumped less than twice, well, twice or less. Um, so save this and go back to Unity and check that it's worked. Okay, so I can jump once, jump twice, but not again. Once, twice, once, twice, but no more. Remember to save cool. the scene and the project as well. Okay, so in this tutorial we've added random gaps to the terrain added character death and fixed the jump functionality of the character controller so that it can jump a maximum of twice before landing. Next time we'll create a menu system to start the game and we'll also add um, things like a score box at the top here. Um, remember you can download the files for this tutorial or play the game at edgeofcode.com on the downloads page and I'll see you next time.